Hey y'all, we got everything back in stock. I want to tell you that right off. But this is one of those field trips that I thoroughly enjoy because we are going to visit the World Shepherd himself. I'm coming around to you. Main thing is just avoid escapees. That's our main objective. Gotcha. We're going to bring him to there and then we're going to put him in there and close the door. And then and then we're going to bring the ewe lamb and put in second. I got it. Right, now, I got him here, so reach underneath him, shake hands. Reach underneath and shake hands. One, two, three. All right, close the door. Ready? All right, stick her in the hole. And walk up. And once they get into that crowd and area, close that set, that blue gate, or keep uh -huh. walking. Keep on walking. Keep walking. Come on, hurry Keep going. Keep walking. Alright, keep going. Keep going. I hold what you got. Let me in there. Alright. Get that gate so they don't come back. Come on, let's go, boy. Put Let's go, boy. Let's go, boy. Alright. Alright. That is cool. It's called crowd tone. So, do so you have them sent from Australia? I had three of these sent from Australia in a container. Oh my. Now watch this. Watch this. Back up. Don't let them see you. Come on, boys. Come on, boys. Let's go. Come on, boys. Let's go. Come on. Get up there. Get up there. Let's go, boys. Let's go. One man was working 160 head a day with this by himself. All right, so everything on drawstring here. Now watch this. Crowds the tail. That drops their feet out from okay. under. You pop this up. You can ear tag them. You can warm them. You can vaccinate them. And then if you ever, I don't trim feet anymore, but if you ever trim feet, two guys just pick him up and roll him upside down. And there's a bag that slides along on this thing. Got her nippers in it and whatever. Just trim his feet standing up and lower him right back down again. Wow. How about that? <laughs> then they are nice and comfy. Yeah, and they're, not, and they're not struggling, they're not hurting. Nope. All right, and these things have such a strong flocking instinct, so whenever I bring them up and open the tub, I want one of y'all to open this, okay? okay? Okay. And just let one sheep in there. All right, open that gate and move out of his eye, move out of his eye, and he'll go forward. Come on, big boy, let's go. All right, now close the gate. If we ultrasound in here, we don't need to catch him. We can ultrasound transabdominally here, okay? And I'll go ahead and let him out. Uh, there you go. All right, now, and so normally we catch a used head in the, in the head catch, okay? And I do, we're plugged in ultrasound, and I do transrectal ultrasound. So I get back here, and I've got a spoon and, a, and I ultrasound from here, and one, they're out, they're out, they're out. This is unbelievable. And uh, <laughs> it's like the back. Cave. I figured an old sapper would like to see this. Oh my goodness. Wow. And uh, so that's a, that's a pretty neat rig to me. It's like having five, six, seven, eight people here. And no and nobody gets wrecked on physical, you know. You know, we brought the ewes and the babies in here. We did a loose crowd. And then you take all of the babies and you run the babies in here, okay? So that they're not getting trampled on, all right? And, and let them in here. And then we've got a set of scales, digital scales that works off a battery that fits in here. And, and uh, uh, 
you know, we can get, get a lamb in there, drop it, somebody will weigh it. You, if it's a little bitty lamb, we lift them out of the top. If it's 40, 50 pounds, they come out of the top. I can pull that gate or I'm out of the When we collect semen off of a ram, we'll bring him in here, and this goes and flops down, and then I'll hold his head. I'll get an assistant to give him a little injection. We take that show stand, and we're... He's standing, we'll lay him on his side under anesthesia and we can get a good electro ejaculation and a really clean sample out of him and he's standing up and eating in 11 minutes. Wow. wow. So it's pretty cool. Um, but all of my adults, <laughs> they know this system well, okay? And so I don't even talk to them. I mean, I barely talk to those guys. They knew what to do, see? And all the adults, they'll just come right through the system. And, and because they have such as, and this is what you have to learn about working animals, is see what their instincts are, their, their drives and so forth. But they have such a strong flocking instinct that the last one that I work in the tub, I trap her here. I open that gate and the girls look up and they say, oh, there's my pen mate. And so That's they just true. fill the whole tub up and so every group, I keep the last one that I've worked in this front section so they can see her, you know. And they just go through a, here like a dose of salt through a wood woman, you know. <laughs> Zoom. That if I'm running an embryo program and I'm not AIing, then, then I'll close this gate and I'll close that gate and I'll have one ram in the long side, one ram in the long side, and they can't get across the gate from each other and beat my gates all up. I mean... You can see a little bit of it here from where I brought some goats in and did a bunch of embryo work in goats. Is they, they just think they want to tear up all your stuff, you know. And uh, so every one of the corners can be boarded off. And as you work a group, see we bring everything from all the farms here and work them. And so you can unload right here. You can unload on the other side. They're identical. I've even, I've even fixed that last post right there on the left. So when I back my trailer in here, if my nose is even with that post right there, I know the trailer's perfectly deep enough and I can get the gate open and get in here. <laughs> Quite a system. So at what point would you need, like at what size would you need like a system like this? I'd say, you know, once you've got over 30 breeding ewes, somewhere in that range, but look at the size of that guy right there. I mean, in, look how long he is. That son gun's got two extra chops in him for most katahs. Oh, yeah. You know? He's, I'd say he's got four. Yeah, I mean, that's the kind of stuff you want for a male line. And look at the son of Big Money Newton. Just study him a minute. He ain't even, he ain't even a year old. He was born the 20th of March, I think. Look at this guy back here. The... the the one kind of... Wow, when was he born? Who's that, that? that ram that you're looking at him with speckles on his nose that's not looking at us right, right. now? Right. That's Big Money Newton's son born March the 20th last year. And wow. he's and he's had no grain. He's had no superior care. I mean, for six months of his life, he was run, running... I, I, I've had Major Tom down there on ground control for six months last summer, so I don't have to mow around the pond. There you go. So he's had almost no care, you know, and that's and that's the way he looks. Look at that bad boy. Wow. All right, that's a wrap. Well, I don't know if you can see her down in there. We got this giant ram, super parasite resistant, and then the girl just shows her face. Yeah, so we're going to bring two more of these guys home. And, um, wow, so, I mean, you don't get any more power packed, and every time I'm around Dr. Stewart, my mind is blown in so many different ways and we're, it's just going to take days to unpack it all. So, that being the case, we're going to have a part two in this where we're going to discuss more and more about this. And folks, if, reach out to us if you have any interest in um, having questions answered or being able to participate in any classes Dr. Stewart may be doing. Um, you know, just let us know down below. Remember, we got comfrey, bone sauce, all that stuff. If you want to check out the ball in this pimp cast out there, Permaculture Pimpcast. Till next time, this is Billy from Permapastures Farm, where permaculture is my passion. We'll see y'all next time.